The current state of cyber defense is a lot different than it was maybe 20 years ago. It used to be that you were dealing with hackers. You were dealing with maybe some kid defacing a website, and you had a pretty good idea that that kid was not trying to bring down America. The number of new attacks, especially the Ukraine series, it wasn't just one attack, the Ukraine series of attacks has changed the perception so that there is more willingness, but the willingness is being misused. They think that going to meetings and talking about it is a good thing. It turns out that going to meetings and talking about it is only a good thing if there's an action that comes out of it. Fast forward, you don't have any time to think about attacks. They happen not just every minute, but every second. We know that the adversaries are using automation to automate their attacks. And we never adjusted as the network defender community. We're still using people to do most of that. All right, so we're bringing people to a software fight, which is never gonna work. It is never going to work. We have to automate everything. And I'm not just talking about the tools that we deploy, but all the infrastructure that we deploy also. It's a concept called DevOps, and it's basically not deploy applications every two years, all right? deploy 10 times a day. There are a um, hundred barriers to, the, to that, that sort of bigger dream of, of automation. Part of it is the installed base, right? You never get to start over fresh, no one does. And so there's a lot of uh, uh, legacy parts, components, thinking, uh, policies that, that don't really encourage the kind of behavior that we want, that you have to kind of evolve your way through. So I think that's a big part of it. The other is uh, market forces, right? Nothing is static in this business, whether it's technology, the business use of technology, uh, or the tactics of the bad guys. We also then think about orchestration, and orchestration is tying together tools and systems and ensuring that um, these tools and systems are interconnected, integrated to streamline processes. One of the things that uh, an automation and orchestration platform does is really stitch together, kind of like Lego, all of the various tools and technologies that the security team uses every day in a way that allows you to create playbooks, essentially the digital version of your standard operating procedure, and then connect to the APIs of the world's security products to be able to automate actions. Standards and APIs are critical to these platforms being able to function effectively for customers, because at the end of the day, the risk without these things is that you know, six months later, after they've got their initial deployment done, they sort of look and say, oh my gosh, this has turned into a custom development project. Does anybody even remember how we did this or uh, how to update it or what have you? The two main benefits are speed and, I guess, reliability, or being resilient. So if we can do things quicker, we can also save money. We can allow free up our analysts to, to focus on other things that require human intervention. Um, and then we, we know that if we're using these systems properly, that uh, the results should be reliable. Uh, the thing that I think automation is going to enable that's been really difficult for people in the past is, you know, throughout the last decade or so, we've become very focused on reducing false positives, uh, being very focused on prioritization and actionable events. And I think the thing that automation is going to be able to enable us to do is start looking at things that are traditionally looked at as informational or low-level alarms uh, that we can allow us to action earlier in the, the life cycle, so become much more proactive. And a lot of times what we share today is uh, indicators, so these are uh, pieces of information that might already uh, indicate that something has already happened in other networks. That's important but also what we need to ensure that they have access to is information that can help them make decisions inside their own tool sets. I think that's where orchestration helps us, making sure that if these indicators come in, that they can automatically be added to a firewall list, as an example, or that uh, IDS sensors can be updated with a new signature. Those are things that I think we need to do in a rapid, real-time basis through automation. We will fail in the whole idea of information sharing if we can't seamlessly move data from one party to another. So it means integrating with uh, uh, a SIM. It means integrating with a case management system or an orchestration system. And a lot of enterprises want to lean heavily on API. 
Adversary playbooks are the thing that's happening right now in the intelligence community. Um, many of the vendors, many of the researchers are thinking about it in these terms. It's a next evolution in our thinking. So if we could collect and distribute and keep up to date all the known adversary playbooks, we can have prevention controls for 99% of what's going on in the industry. One of the challenges that we face is if we come up with standardized playbooks for specific events or activity on the network, how can we be sure that those events are in fact something that can be automated? How do we know that there's not something malicious that's, that's masquerading as something that looks normal? So, you know, to the extent that we can tie that in, into artificial intelligence, I think that'll give us, you know, uh, an advantage on our adversaries as we continue to fight this war. If we're gonna make the internet safe in 10 years, not safer, not incrementally safer, but safe, what would you need? Right? And realizing that we might not have the technology right now to solve some of those problems. So we're looking to think big here. So government, academia, vendors, we all have ideas about what might work. Let's get it all together and work together to make that happen.